The Monster in the Mirror Game by Haley Wong Narrated by Otis Jiry The Monster in the Mirror Game is something I'm about to share with you. It can be life-changing, or it can be useless. It all depends on the way you do it. Now, before we go any further, here are a few warnings. If you scare easily, this isn't for you. If you lack emotional stability, this isn't for you. If you lack patience, this isn't for you. If you lack the ability to take anything seriously, this isn't for you. Most of you should have backed out by now, but if you're anything like me, then you're still reading. If you're interested in how I came across the game, here's a bit of a backstory. My brother was the first to tell me about the game. He came home one day and asked me to check on him every hour. He told me that he'd be in the upstairs bathroom playing a game he'd heard about from one of his friends. Our upstairs bathroom had no windows, so it was the perfect place to play it. I had asked him what he meant, but he refused to tell me. He just marched up to the bathroom and told me to check on him in an hour. When I finally did check on him, I found him shaking and staring blankly into the mirror. I tapped his shoulder, and he turned to face me, nodded, and left the room. He never used the upstairs bathroom again. It was a while before he was finally able to tell me about the game. When he did, he told me the rules, what it was, and what happened. What he told me sent a shiver down my back. I can't tell you what happened to him specifically, because it was extremely personal, and frankly, he'd kill me if I did. But I can tell you how to play, and what you'll be doing. You see, in the Monster in the Mirror game, you're not talking to a ghost or an actual monster. You're talking to yourself. You're talking to the sides of you that linger in your subconscious. You're letting them out, but only momentarily. What's most important about this is the fact that you need to be in control the entire time. If you lose it, even for a second, there's a chance you might never regain control. That being said, if you're still brave enough to play, you'll need a few things. A pen or pencil. A piece of paper. A mirror that you clearly can see yourself in. A small light source, such as a flashlight or nightlight and someone to check on you every hour. Once you have all these things, you're ready to start. First, position yourself in a pitch-black room with the mirror and have something to write on. Second, plug in the nightlight or turn on the flashlight. The point of this is to make it as dark as possible while still being able to see. Third, make sure there are no distractions. You need to be alone in the room. The person who is to check on you should wait just outside the room you're in. Now, this is where patience comes in handy. You see, this process can last anywhere from a few minutes to hours. What you need to do is just stare into the mirror and wait. You may notice that words are coming into your head, words that you don't completely feel are yours. Write them down. Everyone's experience is different. Some will hear voices, others will start to hallucinate. Don't let this scare you. Write down whatever you can. You don't need to talk because they already know what you're going to say. They themselves will say things that will stick with you, but don't let them scare you. And most importantly, don't break eye contact with your reflection, ever. Just a few more things. If the light ever goes out, get out of there. If you break eye contact, get out of there. If you start to lose control, get out of there. If this has already been enough to put you on edge, this is not for you. If you're still going through with it, Good luck. You're about to see the monster beneath your surface. And you can't run from yourself.